Well, hi. <laughs> I'd say welcome back, but it's more probably appropriate to say welcome back to me. Yeah, it's been a while again. It's just exactly as predicted. Things are a little crazy. And so stitching has gone by the wayside and more, actually more to the point, videos have gone to the wayside just because I haven't really had the time when we get to life updates, hopefully that is changing. Probably not, but for a different reason. So anyway, yeah, let's talk about what I've been up to. Besides the fact that there's... Oh, can you tell I'm not used to stitching here? This is actually my stitching spot. Come on. Can you do it? Right through here. Good. She's trying to figure out how to get around the tripod. Now look. Here's Lexi for you. You'll see none of that is for you. See, her head looks a little funky and we'll talk about that in life updates too. That's Hall. It's been sitting in the spare room. If you wanted to sniff it, you had plenty of opportunity. The, 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 the tail just keeps going. What are you doing? Can you lay down? Can you be present anywhere that hasn't... There. <laughs> anyway, stitching-wise, not a lot has gone on, but I do have one kind of exciting thing buried down here in the hall. Anyway, this is my stitching corner and it's not clean right now because it's in progress, but I have no clue what I'm saying. None of this makes any sense. Huh. Whatever. Anyway. Yeah. So a lot has gone on. Most of it has not been stitching. But I do have some stuff to show you, and then I have a whole box of haul here, uh, including an unboxing that's really old news. If you watch any other floss tubers, you've probably seen that one. And an unboxing that is brand new because just today, like a couple hours ago, I got my Black Needle Society box for May. So that will be a new unboxing, so that will be exciting. But anyway, I have a finish. <laughs> I have done absolutely nothing, but I have a finish. So this is, if you've watched me for any length of time, you've seen in the other room, my little Sebastian from Black Butler uh, that Crafty Rogue Gamer made for me sitting in the frame on the wall. And I decided to make the matching CL who was my character that I cosplayed and Sebastian was my friend, and then I cosplayed CL. And so here he is, all done. And so cute. Looks are deceiving, he's a little jerk. If you ever watch the show, but he is done. And let's see if I can find in my box. I've just been throwing things in this box. I actually went back to the same store that I got the frame for Sebastian from, and I got a matching frame for CL so that I can hang them up together and they will match. So, one finish. Not quite an FFO, but I've got the stuff to make it an FFO. Whips. I haven't worked on a whole lot. Uh, one thing I have been doing for May, Stitchy Rin is doing a theme month, and it was uh, Spooky Mayhem. So if you're interested in seeing what people are working on for that or for participating yourself, because it's we're only about halfway through, so there's still time, it's hashtag Spooky Mayhem Stitching on Instagram. And I'll put that also in my video description, as well as a link to Stitchy Rin's floss tube where they talk about it so that you can get some more information. 
So a lot of what I have been working on for the month of May has been spooky stuff. And we all know I have plenty of Halloween stuff to work on, so it hasn't been all that difficult. The first one, I'm still, when I managed to stitch, trying to work on my Mill Hill Mondays. And for that, I've been working on... Bewitching Pumpkin by Mill Hill, of course. And the last time I showed this one to you would have been in my last video, but that was six weeks ago. <laughs> it looked like this. And here's where I'm at right now. Should have been done with this by now, but I'm not. So, but I'm getting there. I just have the bottom to do and then I can start in with the back stitching and the beads. Of course, you can't get into spooky stitching without working on deal struck. And it's probably been quite some time since I showed you anything to do with deal struck. I don't know how far back I'm going to have to dig to find this on a video. Uh, but the last time I showed it to you, it looked like this. And I haven't gotten a ton of work done. I only worked on it a few days, so I have a few hundred more stitches in. So here's where I'm at. And... Nothing too exciting. I'm just still slowly working on stitching my way down this uh, page that is pretty much all going to be hand. <sighs> slowly, slowly, super slowly, but surely working on that. I have an order I want to work, talk about beads in, so. I got a very few, I think maybe even less than 100 stitches in on this one. This is the Walk Fast Sampler that I started in January for the Betty White Memorial slash 100th birthday sale. And the last time I showed this to you, it looked like this. And here's where I'm at now. Not very much further. I just got this bird, which I've realized is a flamingo. At least color-wise, it certainly seems like it is. And a little bit further on the hand, but maybe like just a couple rows on the hand. So I am still working my way through this one, occasionally picking it up but not very often at all. I guess I should be talking about fabrics. This CL was finished on 18 count over the moon from Color and Cotton. This is 16 count all the things from Mystic Fabrics and I am using the called for uh, threads for that one. I think they are all gentle art. No, classic color works. They are all classic color works. In my fun flamingo project bag. The next thing that I worked on for Spooky Mayhem stitching was my Autumn Lane Stitchery, The Witch's Spell. And the last time I showed this one to you, it looked like this. 
and I got a few hundred more stitches in on it. So now it looks like this. So I'm basically, I'm working on filling in this area up in here. Trying to get this all filled in. This is the end of the page. Uh, this is just a few rows above the bottom of the page. So I'm just trying to fill in this first page and get it finished. This is 16 Count Atlantis from Be Stitch Me is the fabric that I am working on that one on. I have a new start. And there's a story that goes with this one. So this is maybe a week or so ago, I was talking with some of the coven. We were chatting over Instagram and I had mentioned that it was kind of a significant date for me in terms of, I hate being vague about things, but this also affects other people that I don't want to drag things out about. So it basically, we're calling it a great escape. And we were talking about, we were comparing notes on all these little things that, that people escape from, whether it's a mindset or a bad situation or some sort of illness or something. And we decided, somebody said, well, since it's, a, it's an important day for you, you should start a new project. And eventually we we're like, well, but a lot of people have that. So we came up with the hashtag Great Escape Sal. And it's basically just kind of a, I called it a start along in honor of Mental Health Week, but I don't think, it's kind of just an ongoing Sal. So just, if you want to participate, if you want to share, just pick a project that kind of speaks to you, has something to do with whatever your great escape was, and you can join in using the hashtag or follow along on Instagram, however you'd like to do. And for me, after looking through all of my projects and spending way more time than I should have on it, I decided to start working on this one. This is from the Black Needle Society. I think it was the January box. Uh, it was the, the happy hour stitching box. And it is ink circles five o'clock. And the reason that I picked this one is there's the margarita up here in the corner. And that just reminds me of a conversation that my mother and I had while I was in the process of going through my quote unquote great escape. It came to be a very <laughs> special and kind of funny conversation and a good memory. And so I thought that would be a great way to incorporate that. And I didn't do a whole lot. I just got in the hundred stitches to start it. And so here's where I'm at on this. This is done on Through the Stones by Be Stitch Me, 16 Count Ada. And all I've got started is the clock in the center. And last but not least, another bit of haul that isn't here yet. It has vanished into the United States postal system after it got out of the Canadian postal system is the Witchy Stitcher's new sal that is starting next month. Uh, the Supernatural sal is made to go with cryptids. They're made to be complementary patterns. So I got to get my butt moving on cryptids. So I still didn't really get my butt moving, but I did get some stitching in on it. So the last time I showed it to you, it looked like this. And after some frogging <laughs> and some stitching, Here's where I'm at right now. So I'm getting so, so close to done with this square. I actually came back and filled in the border underneath Yeti. So 
well, okay, I say I'm getting so, so close, but I have all of this border to do. And I think stitch wise, I'm a little over halfway done with this section. Then I get to move up to Loch Ness and I can't wait for that one. So I'm still working on it, chugging along. This is probably given the chance what I will work on most of the time. But my Kindle is also being finicky and for some reason the Loch Ness pattern wasn't loading very well into it. So I don't know. That may slow me down a little bit. Or I may jump to the next one and come back to Loch Ness later when I figure something out or just print the pattern. I don't know. But anyway, there I am. This is done on 16 Count Olympia by Mystic Fabrics. So yeah, that's all I've really done stitching wise in the last few weeks. Not a whole lot. Plans? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to try to keep working on spooky projects. Cryptids is going to be one of the most uh, important ones. And then it's kind of going to be whatever I can motivate myself to work on. Because motivation has been an issue lately. So yeah, plans are question mark. Am I even going to stitch? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I'm going to try. I'm going to stitch tonight. Well, no, actually, I probably won't because this is going to take forever to edit because I'm going to have to go through like all kinds of old videos to find the stills for previous. I'm thinking of getting a new computer. Because this one, editing on it is a pain. I don't know. Thinking about it. I have to start saving for it. Okay! <laughs> I am so out of practice at this, it's not even funny. Haul. You wait till last. Uh, I have some haul that I don't physically have in front of me, so I will put in screenshots of it when I do my editing. Uh, the first thing is the same, the same Etsy shop that has had the pattern for CL and for Sebastian has patterns for Yuri on Ice, which is the anime that I mentioned I had been watching last time and really loved. So I got those little patterns. And I can't wait to get started on them. And in my language learning, I finally got through, and I'm not 100%, there are still a few that I get confused with pretty easily, but I've mostly got down the hiragana for uh, the Japanese alphabet, the first alphabet. Okay. So to celebrate that, I went ahead and ordered a sampler from Modern Folk Embroidery that I have been looking at for a little while, and it is a hiragana sampler. And eventually I will stitch that and hopefully it will help me even more with my letters. And there's one for katakana too. And when I get to working on, when I get to working on katakana and then actually maybe getting close to mastering that, I will probably get that one too. Last week was Friday the 13th. That meant witchy stitcher had a sale. So I got a few things there. I picked up the pumpkin spice latte and the candy corn and the universal monsters sal because I've been wanting to do that one for a really long time too. So that's all of the stuff that's not physically here with me to show you. Now we can get into the fun stuff that I can put hands on. First off, and you know it's been a long time <laughs> since I did a floss tube. When I have two fabrics of the month from both of my fabric of the month providers to show you, which means it's been well over a month. So 
We'll start with Be Stitch Me. First up was my March Fabric of the Month. And that was a neutral because I'm in the mix club. And so here we have Cinnamon. And that's not really greatly true to color. It's kind of an adobe, well, yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, that's true to color. So it's kind of an adobe brick color. Nice. And then for April, I had the color club. And that was rainy day. Much like it is here right now. Then I also had two from Mystic Fabrics. For April from Mystic, I have Wisteria. You have to bring it closer over here. And then her May fabric of the month. Misty started experimenting again, and we always love it when that happens, at least I do. So the May fabric of the month is called Kaleidoscope. And look at this. Kind of a nice muted tie dye. Oh, it's so cool, I love it. I never want to stitch on it. That defeats the purpose of the Fabric of the Month Club. So there's that. Going through older stuff, I got the Black Needle Society, the Murder Mystery Box. And unfortunately, I ended up having to miss the actual day they did actually have an online event where you could talk to the um like they put together a murder mystery and they sent you like all of this stuff like emails and police reports and all this stuff uh and then they let they had an event where you could interview the suspects and they had a prize for like everybody that figured it out got entered in a drawing for a prize or maybe it was the first person who figured it i don't remember but yeah so i got the box but then i wasn't able to go that day because i had rehearsal uh, but anyway but here's the box and i'll show you what all we got and it's cool because everything is done in like, here's the project bag. So it was, it's like a little special investigation file. And then all of the, the murder mystery details were in there. Here is an evidence bag with a chain of custody on it and everything. So that was the fabric that went with it. And I think the fabric was called Bastelstoff Blue Fabric. And it was basically like the whole murder mystery centered around the person who was responsible for creating this special fabric or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't there, but. <laughs> See, this is so fun. I wish I could have been there. Got a spoon. You have just been poisoned. This is McCarthy's award-winning strawberry scone mix. And Jocelyn and Co. Sweet Strawberry Preserves. And I think there was something to do with scones. I 
think all of these had to do with like the story around it. Hand dyed silks from Be Stitch Me. Where's that napkin I was using earlier? This is red velvet. All nice blood reds. Poinsettia. And wine. Another evidence bag. Thread ide or fabric identifier cards. Fabric Detection Services. And I will use these because there are a couple fabrics that I have not been able to put on hangers because they're in they're in plastic bags like this and they don't have the um they don't have the name of the fabric or the size stapled to them like most of my fabrics do. So I will be able to use this to actually hang those up and then that came with the little clips to go with them. This is a thread jewelry. Baker Street key. So you can kind of see that. Thread cards, and the first one on in the front is from Agatha Christie, but I think each of them has different literary detective quotes on them. So, needle minder. How did I not even open the needle minder? Another Agatha Christie quote, uh, the impossible could not have happened, therefore the impossible must be possible in spite of appearances. And you can't really see that very well at all, but in a second you'll see why that doesn't matter. Because pretty much here's what it looks like. <laughs> this is the pattern that came with it, which I love. A little poison bottle in the corner and the magnifying glass so I look forward to working on that one and then last but not least they had a clue character inspired candle and I got mrs. peacock which is black raspberry burgundy rose dark vanilla bean toasted marshmallow and smoldering wood And it smells very nice. So, again, you've probably seen that. I loved it. It's one of my favorite boxes I've gotten from them so far. And I was bummed that I missed the actual event. But I was dancing. I got an order from Color and Cotton. And this is... Long, long ago, when I got all of the seasonal witches from Bendy Stitchy, they were out of some of the flosses that I needed. They were out of stock. So two more of those have come, came into stock, and I ordered them. I think I still have one or two that might not be ready yet. Um, but here's Dracula. You can see the variegation in there from bright red down to wine. Love it. And ultramarine. And because it's silly to have floss travel alone, I ordered a few. These are intended for those Yuri on ice patterns. Um, I got three short cuts of the same fabric. 
So this is 18 count Ada in Salt Rock. And they're shorter cuts. So unlike that massive CL, or this massive piece of fabric I have here that has tiny little CL in the middle, these are much smaller to fit Yuri and Yuri and Victor. And I got three of the same so that they will match. Then a few days ago, talking with the coven again, they enable most of my bad decisions. Actually, it was the day after we were talking about the Great Escape cell because there were a couple things in there that I thought about starting, but I didn't have the fabric for. I have like four hangers of past fabrics of the month, but I didn't have fabric that I wanted for these. Um, some of them were because they're my Hades and I didn't have any 25 count Lugana. So now I have a 25 count easy grid Lugana for whenever I want to start a Hade. This will fit, I looked at all of the ones I currently own, this will fit any of the minis that I have. So when I feel like starting Hade, here it is. Then I thought I wanted to get some smaller cuts of fabric because the problem that I was having was not that I have, it wasn't that I didn't have fabric that would go with these patterns. It was that the patterns I was looking at were all smaller and all of my fabrics of the month are fat quarters. Yes, I could cut them. But what I don't want to do is cut a, cut a fat piece of fabric off and then have an odd size cut and then that's what I want to work on or want to use for a specific something. So I thought maybe if I order some smaller ones, then I would have smaller ones. Hi, what? What? Are you coming up? Are you coming up or are you going to stand there and make me look like I'm talking to air? Leaning on. <laughs> you don't care, do you? Hi. Oh, oh. Don't even. No, don't. You jump down and you walk right around and come. Come back up. Why? Why? Can I finish? Can I finish? I'm just going to keep talking even though you're sitting here. There. Yeah. Go away. What you can't see is I have a, a piano bench right here that I leave stuff on. And then my office chair is right over here. So there's only this little space for her to get through and the tripod is right in the middle of it. So this is really distressing to her. She wants to be able to get through. <laughs> She's fine. So anyway, so I thought I would order some smaller cuts of a bunch of different fabrics. And it turns out that like 123stitch and crossstitchingsupplies.com were both super, super low on any sort of dyed fabrics. So I got one piece, and this is 18 count Stormy Clouds from Zweigert. Zweigert. So, there, I've got a smaller piece for one of my smaller projects. And the plan is to just start accumulating some smaller pieces so that I have them, so that I don't feel bad about cutting my fabrics. And it won't be too, it won't be as bad when I'm, once I've moved and I can get my sewing machine out again to surge the edges of the fabric so they're not fraying everywhere. But I don't want to cut right now because I just don't want to mess with getting the sewing machine out. So I got those uh, from crossstitchingsupplies.com and 
as long as I was there, I got a couple patterns. So I got uh, from Cottage Garter, Garden Samplings. Uh, this is part of a series, but this is really so far the only one that I've wanted. Uh, it's a year in the woods, number one, and the, fo the fox. Yes, I love foxes. So there he is. And from Thread Maniac. Got this massive pattern. Look at how thick that is. Curious fox. So that was all of my haul prior to today. I have two more boxes on the way. One of them is the kit for the Supernatural Sal. So the fabric, the floss, and some other little goodies that witchy stitcher threw in there. <laughs> well, I should know. Every time I do a video, this happens. Spooky mail! <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just flash my address for everyone to see, but even if I did, I'm only living here another month, so, hmm. Uh, anyway, my witchy stitcher stuff came. So let's see what's in here. Well, I tried to do this one-handed so I can hold the phone. First of all, there's all kinds of black. Oh, it's going to be a mess to clean up, but that's fine. Schedule and floss list. Candy, always important. I think everything else is probably in the bag, but I'm just gonna... Oh, nope. I'm glad that I dug some more. Stickers! And then I have the bag. It should have my fabric and floss in it. I have attracted a canine observer. So here's my uh, fabric, 30 count old Salem linen. Oh, now I've got ghosts flying all over the place too. <laughs> I think this is just the floss. Yeah, just the floss. Uh, just looking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight skeins of 310. Those aren't 310, so. And my needle. So there we go. Two unboxings for the price of one. See y'all later. And then the other one, I'll tell you about when it gets here. But I got a message, or I got an email today that the label was printed, so I expect it to ship in the next few days. So, let's see what's in the box! This month was mermaids, unicorns, and dragons. Oh my. And right off, we've got some delicious looking popcorn. 
Thatcher's Unicorn. Snack like a unicorn on this fruity flavored popcorn. Keep your fingers, fingers clean and use the snap chopsticks from our January box. That's right over there, so yeah. Specialty flosses. Ooh, this is from Fiberlicious. It's called Unicorn Dreams. <laughs> kind of looks like a unicorn tail right there. Oh my, what is this? This is a, <laughs> a mermaid bottle opener. Made by Hampton Nautical. Oh, that go this goes with this. Okay. I was like, I don't see that on the list. Now I do. Oh, my niece is going to be jealous of this. It's a mermaid tail tumbler. You can't really see that because of the glare. Um, but there's a tail and it's got all of the sparkles in it. Oh, my niece is gonna be jealous, but I'm not giving it to her, this is mine. And the thing that I was confused on was the straw. So, I think it must go this way. <laughs> That's so cool! I love it. Got Unique Corns Sticker Sheet. It's got all kinds of different unicorns on it and they say like cheerful stuff like you are magical and believe in yourself and you sparkle. Needle Minder this time around is adorable. It's from Autumn Lane Stitchery. It's a little cross-stitching dragon. <laughs> Unicorn embroidery scissors. Oh, I guess they go that way. A uh, vegan leather baby dragon snap tray. So it's got the little baby dragon on it. And when you snap the corners together, I, this was uh, one of the things I thought was really cool. And I wasn't in the subscription when it ha when this came out, but it just snaps together and you have a little tray. You know, I have a friend who has a lot of these in different sizes for games, board games. He's so cute. So, yeah. And then here's the project bag from Love You More. Pretty fun. Unicorns and mermaids. And the pattern. Should have guessed. Should have guessed. Because when I think of mermaids, there's several Autumn Lane stitchery patterns that come to mind. And so this is The Beauty and the Beast by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I'm a lot in love with that right now. Oh boy. Can I just start a new project? Anyway, that's all I have for haul. All. That's haul. Life updates. Work continues apace. It's going fine. 
I really like working from home. That's about the only thing that's been going right. Yeah, you should go walk away because I'm about to talk about what a brat you've been. Lexi's been a handful. She went in for her checkup and, okay, this part's not her fault. But when we got in there, I don't know if, if you might have noticed the shaved patch on her head when she was up here earlier. And you might have in the past noticed that she had a little spot on her head. May, may have noticed because sometimes she would scratch it and it would bleed. So it just looked like a little wart or something. I wasn't too concerned about it, except for the fact that when she itched her head, it would bleed often. And then it would scab over and then she would itch her head and it would bleed more and it was just pain. So I kind of asked, I just asked the vet to take a look at it just to make sure. And she also didn't think it was anything. But then when they were doing her exam and they looked in her mouth, they realized she had a con has a condition called uh, gum hyperplasia, which I guess is pretty common in boxers. Oh, that's another thing that I didn't tell. I got her DNA done. And she is actually exactly what they told me she was. I know with rescue dogs, sometimes that's not the case. Um, but she is 50% boxer and 50% pit bull. So exactly what the rescue told me she was. I'm easily distracted. I'm cleaning up while I'm talking. But apparently this is a relatively common thing in boxers. One moment, please. And it basically just meant she had a whole lot of gum tissue. And the vet was like, well, it's a lot, even for a boxer. So between that and the spot on her head, I was going to recommend that she get a dental cleaning anyway. But I think it might be worth, um, when we put her down for the dental cleaning, put her down, put her under. Those are two very different things. <laughs> to go ahead and take the spot on her head and go ahead and take... Uh, trim back her gums and might as well send them for biopsy. So we send them for biopsy. In the meantime, I had a handful of a dog. She had her surgery and she freaked out. <laughs> First, when I came to pick her up, she walked right past me. She was not speaking to me at all. Walked right past me to the door like, I don't need you. I just need to get out of here. Then they gave me a cone of shame because she had stitches on her head. Well, I put the cone of shame on her because I had a dance class that night. And it was it was a mess because originally they had told me that she would be done. They're like, we usually have people pick their dog's up from surgery around 4, 4.30. Okay, well, my dance lesson isn't until 7. That's fine, and she's going to sleep all night anyway. She was the last surgery of the day, so they call me, and they're like, we need you to pick her up between 5.30 and 6. Okay, I can still make my dance class. It's fine. I, sh I guess I should mention the dance studio is 30 to 45 minutes away, depending on traffic and if there's construction or whatever. So I pick her up, I'm like, well, I should put the cone on her since I'm not going to be in the house. And I put the cone on her and she arched her back like a cat and just stood completely still and refused to move. except for the fact that she was still on the shot of the pain medication, so she was still high. So eventually her butt started just going, slowly dropping. Like, well, crap, I can't leave her here like this. <laughs> She's just standing. So I called and canceled my dance lesson. Next night I had tickets to see Dear Evan Hansen. So she's got to be better behaved today. It's, it was just, she wasn't feeling good last night. It's fine. So I put the 
the cone back on her. She did the same thing. Like, well, she just needs to get used to it. It's fine. I'll just leave it on her for a minute, let it go. So she doesn't get the idea that if, if she just holds still long enough, I'll take it back off. 20 minutes. She stood there in the hallway for 20 minutes. Didn't move. So I finally called the vet and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm texting my friends that I'm supposed to go to the show with. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going because right now my dog hasn't moved in the last 20 minutes. And so the vet gave me some ideas. She got most of a thing or most of a side of bacon that day. But it got her up and moving. And then I wished she wouldn't move. Because you've seen how graceless she is on a normal day. Put a cone on her. Nothing is permanently broken, but so many things. I just sat working at my desk all day and I'd hear crash, bang, thud, all day. And then she's acting completely normal, but I noticed that I haven't refilled her water dish in like two days, day and a half. And the vet had told me to watch out for her to start, re if she started refusing food or water. I'm like, I don't think it's anything. I don't think. Like, I'm feeding her wet food, so she's probably not as thirsty. But, but all I'm doing is refreshing her water. I, like, usually I have to refill it. So I call the vet and they're like, you know, just to be safe, bring her in. So I brought her in and of course she's 100% completely fine. Just wasting my afternoon. And as soon as we walk home, what do you think she did? Went straight to the water bowl. Drank the whole bowl. And then, then a week later, I decided I didn't, I, well, I needed to go grocery shopping is what it is. I didn't have any lunch in the house. So I ordered DoorDash or Jimmy John's or something. Anyway, I ordered a sandwich to be left out in front of my house, left at my door so that I could go down and pick it up and have lunch while I was working. Apparently when I went out to get the sandwich, Lil Miss Thing just walked out the door. She's never done that before, but she walked out the door and I didn't see her and I didn't hear her cause she did it in like super stealth mode apparently. I don't know how she didn't get her collar to jingle. But like 20 minutes later, I get a couple phone calls. My phone is like lighting up. Some strange number called me twice and I don't answer the phone if I don't recognize the number. But so I didn't answer the phone and then this person starts texting me. And so finally I read the text and the text is like, hey, your dog is outside, not on a lead. Just thought you might like to know. I tried to tie her back up because I have a tie out outside, but I haven't used it in so long that, that the clip is actually rusted shut. Like I tried to tie her back up, but she could, but I couldn't because it was rusted shut and she just let herself out. Anyway, so she's been a handful. That was way too much detail, wasn't it? Mm. Oh well. Let's see, what else has happened? Dance show was last weekend. It went great. One of my tappers bought me flowers. Um, I didn't make any major, major mistakes. I made some small ones, but I always do. Uh, the, my choreography was really, really well received. Um, I got lots of compliments on it and now it's over. Uh, it's, I've decided to delay my move. And the reason was because I was, I've been having a lot of problems with my knees because I've been doing so much dancing. And so I would get home from dance and instead of cleaning and packing and trying to decide what I was going to do with all this stuff, I was doing nothing. I was coming home and, and propping my feet up and, and icing. 
So my house is in the same condition it was in in January. I've made zero progress. I'll make zero progress this weekend because my niece is turning six and they decided to have a birthday party, so I'm going up to Michigan. Um, it'll be good to see everyone, but but I'm going right up. I'm going up Friday night and coming back Sunday instead of staying for a week. But then after that, hopefully I'm going to start packing, which is why I don't think I'm going to get a lot of stitching done. New goal is to be living up north more than I'm living down here the beginning of July. Complicating. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff from, I've got stuff from my old job that needs to get done that is also going to be taking up time. And that's, I don't know. That's my goal. Uh, I won't have, I won't be completely up there. There's no way. But I would like to be more up there than down here by then. And maybe be ready to put the condo on the market. So, yeah, but that got delayed because dance was so rough on my knees. I think that's probably about it. Reading, watching, listening to. I have been working my way through uh, the Entertainment District arc for Demon Slayer. I think that's the only watching I've done that was new. I've been revisiting old stuff. And then reading slash listening to, I am listening to uh, The Apollo Murders by Chris Hadfield. And it's basically as the dog keeps hitting the tripod with her toy. I'm sorry if it starts bouncing. Uh, it's basically historical fiction set in, like, the Cold War space race about a fictitious final Apollo mission. Uh, and there's some espionage going on. There's some murder going on. Uh, it's quite interesting. What? I'm just petting my dog. So I'm really enjoying it. I also read the second book in the uh, I don't remember what the actual trilogy is called, but it's the Magnus Chase trilogy by Rick Riordan, the one with the Norse gods instead of the um, the Greek gods finished the second book in that. I don't like it as much as I like the Greek God stories. Um, but, you know, it do, it'll do in a pinch. I've been reading through Demon Slayer, trying to get past the point that the anime has. Well, right now I'm trying to catch up to the anime. This is still part way through season one. But I'd like to get to the point where I'm ahead of the anime and I can kind of keep track with that. Other than that, I haven't really done a lot. I haven't seen the new Doctor Strange yet. But I'm planning to take care of that soon. She's not going to leave me alone. <laughs> so I guess it's good that I'm basically done. So anyway, that's all for now. That's all. Timer says I've been talking for over an hour. Ah. I don't know when I'll be back again. Hopefully it won't be six weeks. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how much stitching I get done. And... In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy.
see you soon. Bye.